Hello everyone. If you're like me and you're obsessed with time and time tracking, and also uh, you're doing most of your work in Rome research, uh, probably you have seen the native uh, timer of Rome research. So uh, the native timer of Rome research or old timer is like this, and you get a timer and you can pause it, start it again, but if you open and close it, you lose the time. It's not an inline thing, so you cannot write around it. And uh, yeah, I think the most important thing is that uh, it doesn't persist, and uh, it's not that useful because of that. And uh, there is no way to manually enter the uh, time that you spend and uh, some of these issues is also shared with the uh, native formula timer uh, but uh, my focus today is on time tracking i have developed this uh, stopwatch or timer if you wish and i have a template for it it's called enhanced timer and it's nothing but c3 timer tag inside these uh, curly brackets. And uh, when it's paused, it's red. So there's uh, CSS for that. And you can start it. For example, I want to time my presentation. And uh, I'm going to explain functionality. So I've already explained start and stop. And it works on refresh. For example, I can click on this and uh, it uh, is still counting. For example, it's 20 seconds right now. Let's try it again. So wait for a few seconds and then uh, 28 seconds. So uh, it works on refresh. Even if you refresh your page, uh, it uh, still uh, tracks the time. And um, it's possible to have uh, many active timers. So, for example, I have uh, I can add other active timers uh, in this branch, and let's try it here. Okay, so this one is pause, and uh, I start this timer, and this stops the other one. So here is the rule. You can have only one active timer in a branch. So this is a child of presentation. And because of that, when I activate this one and uh, start this timer, this timer is pause. I can test it the other way. So uh, you see that's the case, this one also. But you can have timer in uh, sibling blocks. And in other places in your graph, that's OK. And uh, let me try this. So for example, uh, here I can add another timer. And these two are siblings. I can start this one and also start this one. And there is no issue there. And um, this limitation of having one active timer in uh, each branch is because we want to prevent uh, double counting. So because tags are shared between blocks uh, on the same branch. And uh, if you want to, for example, in future uh, have a statistics and uh, use your tags to generate some statistics is going to double count if multiple timers are active uh, in the same branch. So in future, I want to add showing the statistics and maybe habit tracking and things like that. So I'm open to suggestions. So if you have any suggestion, please uh, comment uh, under the YouTube video or on Twitter. So next is manual time entry. So uh, I now realize that I have not started this timer, for example, presentation timer. I can uh, hold down shift and click on the timer button 
and I get the time entries. And I see that I have uh, stopped tracking time uh, uh, 127. I can look at the time on my computer right now. It's 30. I can update this. Currently, presentation is one minute. If I click on it and refresh, it's going to show four minutes. And I can start uh, tracking the presentation time. So uh, basically, let me delete these. Uh, basically, by shift clicking on the timer, you see all the time periods that uh, have been recorded. And you can manually change start and stop. And the format is clear. Start is the left one. Stop is the right one for each time period. You can also put in the uh, duration. So for example, I stop the time right now and I see the newest entry. So uh, it's 1.30 to 1.31. And I want to uh, add in, let's say, five more minutes. So I keep the start and I put in five minutes here. So currently, uh, this should add like four minutes to the total because uh, the tracked uh, time period here was one minute. Now I'm saying that starting from this time, uh, I want to add five minutes. And I need to add, so, so this is the notation. So this is the start time plus five minutes. So this should change the total to nine. So nine minutes. I can do it the other way. So I can say that this is my end time and I have track time. I, I want to uh, have a time period starting five minutes before this. So this is a notation. So this is my end time point minus five. Still the total should be the same. Let's change it to four. So in this way, you can enter things manually easily. For example, uh, right now I remember that, oh, I uh, wanted to track uh, time for this branch. I started, I stop it right away and shift click. I see the end point, I see the start point, and I want to uh, manually enter that uh, I have been talking about functionalities for five minutes and not five minutes, probably two minutes. And uh, this is going to update the timer to two minutes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think this is very handy uh, because many times I find myself uh, not start at the timer and I want to manually correct the time. Okay, and uh, how it is implemented. So it's implemented using block references. So if you want to see the corresponding block reference, you can click on the timer. After you start it, you see this block reference again. Uh, Control Shift O is opening this block. So this is the ID of this uh, time record. And uh, you can edit it or you can just easily uh, shift click on it. So you can shift click on it or like any other block reference, you can, uh, you can go uh, on this uh, block reference and then press Control Shift O. And then you can uh, see the uh, time segments and edit them. And what you see here is the block reference uh, for uh, this block. So for example, if I put the parentheses, I see that this is a block reference for this. But I'm not doing that because I don't need this uh, a reference to show up. So because of that, I'm removing this. 
uh, this was just a little bit of information about uh, the implementation. You don't need to know this to use the code. And next is deleting the current running time period. So for example, I start this and then I get distracted and start checking Twitter or uh, watching YouTube videos. And I remember that all oh, this uh, timer was running. I can just control click this to uh, remove the latest uh, recorded time. Next, I want to discuss how you can reset the timer. So uh, first you can delete the time entry. So shift click and then delete this. Don't delete the uh, mm, block ID of uh, this block. So just delete the uh, time entry and then refresh. You see it's zero. So what happens if you delete this? Uh, it's going to ruin the timer because I'm deleting this and this has been referred to here and you see that if I delete this uh, this is uh, Rome's default uh, behavior whenever you delete a block uh, each reference to that block is replaced by the string of that block so this is uh, the correct behavior so then you need to manually delete this so because of that uh, it's better to just uh, remove the uh, time entry. So again, I start this, shift click, and remove this. Okay, and then I refresh the timer. It's zero right now. Okay, so that's the first way of doing this. And uh, the other way is to uh, just remove the block reference here. So this is a one-way relationship. So uh, this block has a one-way relationship and knows the corresponding uh, time period entry. So if you delete this, you can reset the timer. So this entry is there, but there is no connection between these two. So this is not going to be used by anything. So uh, that's okay. And uh, yeah, so in this way, you can uh, remove the, you, you can reset the timer, or you can just leave the whole thing and start again. So very simple. Okay. And uh, yeah, so the other thing is that because there, there, there is this one way relationship, you can, uh, you can move around timers. For example, uh, here I remember that I want to track the time I spend on ROM enhancements and ROM enhancement is my project which consists of time tracking, PDF highlighter and other extensions that I've developed. So I can just copy this and paste it here. So uh, there is no issue. I'm just connecting this block to that time entry. And if I start it again, uh, it uses the time entry. And let's click on this. You see all the time entries. I remember that I have not tracked the time. Uh, so I'm going to uh, update the latest one, for example, and put in 130. Uh, is this start point? Uh, I think there is an issue with the ordering of this. I'm going to fix it. Uh, I'm going to uh, make it so that the latest time period or latest time uh, segment comes uh, first as the first child. So I'm not going to re-record the uh, presentation or demo. Uh, I'm just going to fix this in the code uh, in future. So now if I refresh this, 33 minutes, uh, all the time that I spent uh, on ROM enhancement. Uh, next, I'm done with functionalities and I don't want this timer. Uh, I don't want this one too. And uh, CSS tags. So I have four CSS tags, timer activated, 
is for both running timer and uh, pause timer. And uh, these are specific for each timer type. So for running timer, for example, we have this uh, green uh, color. For pause timer, we can uh, see that the color is red. And then timer zoom. So whenever I zoom on a block, I'm just hiding this. So if you want to show it and change it, you can. But I'm not updating the timer here. So it's just C3 timer button. So uh, it's better to hide it. And you see uh, all you need in this file. I'm going to uh, share a link to this, and you can just import it. So uh, as always, the description of how to uh, use the code and uh, what you need to copy into your Rome.js or Rome CSS pages is going to be on my GitHub page. I'm going to link them uh, down below this video. And um, yeah, so next I'm going to work on uh, showing the statistics, as I said, and uh, probably habit tracking and goal tracking uh, using uh, the timer and potentially counter. And uh, yeah, so just let me know if you have any suggestion and any feature request. Thanks.